Hey guys, today I got, got a project converting my old furnace to new valve system. Intermediate pilot ignition kit, bought it online and um, does the comp components here. I partially took apart my old stuff. It was really ugly stuff and, and whoever did that conversion or repaired it, the unit should not do that thing ever again because uh, it was complete disaster here. That's my valve and that's the pilot. Usually pilot comes from, from the valve for uh, safety issues so it comes from here. It looks like it wasn't working properly. So what they did, they put the straight pipe from this going here using this valve and to the sensor and burner here. So once it's lit and if let's say the, the fire goes down, the gas will still will be going, filling up all the chimney and stuff. Very dangerous stuff. I don't know whoever did this, it's like just so unprofessional and so uh, dangerous I'll say, at least without swear words. So uh, that my system it's very old, uh, that those are sensors um, right here, those are sensors that kicking in the fan. So let's say if I short it right now, if I short this, the fan will kick in because there is no control board whatsoever, it's just all straightforward thing. Because the fan is running right now. It's very old stuff. Uh, uh, it's very old stuff probably four years old or so. So this valve will go, this one also will go, and then um, <clears throat> we'll have to install this unit. Um, with the controller. And then there is a high voltage spark that fires up the pilot right before you need the heat to go on and it has a, has a like high voltage wire similar to the car spark plug wire and uh, all kind of hookups and that's my old uh, ignition pilot so already removed and that was a uh, original Pilot 2, which is a rotten, and uh, it's it wasn't working for at least 10 years or so. And also, I'll need the transformer 24 volts that will be constantly running. This module probably will go somewhere here, so it should be like this or sideways, like that. Valve will be replaced because I don't need that outlet. Black tube starts over there, so from here I'm going to place entire tube and follow the code. The transformer I'm going to take from, from this box, that's 110 here. And also I'm going to relocate my thermostat upstairs. I got Nest and with the old system it didn't work because there's no 24 volts. And instead of just converting to 24 volts, I'm just gonna convert it to a completely new system, which is gonna save some gas too, because it's not running the pilot all the time. So I never work with the gas system, besides the hooking up the oven and stuff. But just your, use your common sense, man, you know? came off pretty easy I'll pick this one down. I guess I need some better tool than this 
it's actually two, but not for this. I'll try this one. It's not work. If it doesn't work, then I will get two. That's pretty tight one. That was pretty tight one. Ooh. You know, you want to secure the pipe because you're gonna bend it. You don't want to do that. Alrighty. There is a valve and there is, it says in on here, that's the out over here. I'm just gonna roughly to mount it. It's not permanent right now, it's just for testing purposes. Now I need to measure that plane. Those pipings are gonna be replaced all the way up to there and safety valve is gonna be somewhere. I'll have to shut main valve, gas supply valve drain it using my oven that's uh, that tube right here that's the new uh, port for pilot and um, I'm gonna reuse this tube right here it's pretty long so I can take it and bring it from here all the way to the sensor mounting right here the pilot is gonna be here on top the only thing now I have to figure out where all components gonna be installed. You don't want to overheat anything, those modules, so place them in a safe location. In my opinion, the safest one is gonna be here because there's no much heat is going on here. But you also don't want to mount too low in case you got flood or whatever happened to your, you know, might be flooding basement, just in case, you know. I just try to think ahead of any troubles that might come up. Hopefully it never happens, but so after thinking a little bit the best part is gonna be in this section where the motor so it's kind of cool to keep all the electronics in one place you don't have to run long wires and stuff that's gonna be this unit mounted just like manual says contacts facing down so if ever any moisture builds up it's gonna be vented plus that there's an air flow always gonna be here which is also will help probably to dry wire will go will make the hole will go to the top section where the valve is mounted but those two wires are uh, that's the power supply from transformer and we just can take it out of the pipe there is plenty of wire mounted pretty much anywhere three feet long and the transformer I also want to mount somewhere here because that will be really convenient so Let's say you got transformer here, you got um, a module here, and it's all in one place. And those two wires, that the valve controller wires, the spark wire, go up to the top part of the go to the burner. And those two wires from that box will go down to the transformer to this section. That's the only two wires I have to run from top. So, um, also another thing, to mount it properly, see how there's a wires, you don't, to, well, you don't want to mount them like that and smash, smash the wires. But there's another option like this, it's also pretty good. I only need like one screw, because there's like two panels, pretty tight to each other, that's the supply. We'll come here, I'm gonna drill two holes here and those wires will come right up 
and go nice in like this to the box. Yeah, that's not an option. Came off pretty easy. That belt needs to be replaced without extra outlet on the side. That's the two holes for wires. Those two contacts for 24. AC voltage. This one on the way now. I'll take it out. The only one actually is sticking out on this side. This one, other one is goes inside with the filter. So it's not a big deal. I'm still gonna remove it. I need to drill a hole for wiring, high voltage, and this one. So we're in here. Nice and neat. Go up there. Those are cool things. I like them a lot. Kind of all, all size fits all. But to start the drilling the hole, it's I recommend to use a tiny drill bit. So as usual, I use my rainbow vacuum cleaner. The good helper, actually. I always do that. Pretty cool attachment. It's pretty long and freaking tiny. So I'm gonna vacuum first all that crap out of there. I'm gonna paint that with the rust oil and paint. So I want this thing to look a little bit, a little bit better. You know, a few years protection. It's kind of show some wear. Surface rust will a little bit slow down. Hard style radio station. Hard base FM. Amazing. Amazing. Find a place of That's pretty clean right now. Uh, burners are clean too from inside. They used to be like really shitty. Now it's good clean. By the time I make it working, it will be dry complete. So, looks. The dryer looks clean. Looks really fresh now. I put the uh, thread compound on this pipe now. Drill dope. 
as sealant. So it makes it help to turn pretty easy too. But now it goes tight. And now I want to straight these things together using wrenches. Well, I guess it needs to be forced to one turn. Pretty tight, so I don't think really need to be forced even more because uh, leak tested with the spray water or something when I started. Obviously, you will hear if there is some leaks. It's gonna be really obvious, but just shut your drum and bass off or hard style because you're not gonna hear that shit leaking. If something blessing like that on the background. <laughs> I'm gonna put this piece if you take it out. This pipe that was actually here is perfect diameter. I'll cut all that piece and make nice route from uh, from this side. It goes up here and that will be my pilot. It will be much better than it was ever been here. There is so much spare. I don't need to buy anything. I just use all that stuff that I had before. A pipe cutter cuts pipes any diameter even this one that's what it will, you'll need okay very easy to use tight slightly and then try start to spin and then retight spin retight spin you just in case you never use that so go like back and forth too eventually it will snap off the straight perfect cut as long as you don't tight too much and keep turning you will get better cut. All fit perfect. Does it go because it's kind of bent here? I want to cut it again or try to straighten it, but usually it's pretty hard to do. You know? Much better, you see how it's easy slips on. You can start from this spot right now then. And then we'll keep bending slowly, not to pinch it. You cannot pinch it, you just have to be like really general on that bending here, like supporting that. Just route as whatever you want it to be. I probably want to go somewhere on this side here or behind this pipe. You don't really see it much, but it's also away from the heat. Fabrication. Okay. So now I have to work on the pilot. This sensor is not needed anymore. The sensor is gone. Now the sensor uh, gives the spark and also the sensor. So it's two in one. So you don't need all these two. Okay, that's how you assemble that. You take your old uh, thermocouple. Was this one? That's my old wire. You toss it, okay? You remove it. You take this. This has a like electrode, ground electrode, and that adapter. You just like let it like this inside, and then that's what you should do. You get something like this, and on top of it, there's a two uh, securing screws. You put on here and here, and once you slide it on top, you got that Allen wrench here included. Just tight it. It doesn't turn anymore, anywhere. It's really firm, but you can adjust it. Go down and up 
so like that's the spark and then the temperature so i would say that's really good combination how it will work also you put the wire of the sensor and the spark plug that thing is pretty much assembled ready to be mounted on there the only thing i want to probably to keep this it's like kind of quick release i think why not we just will do somewhere in the in the in the middle of connection for that pipe and when i need to service that or i might shorten that thing not here but like up to here it will be will be really nice that's the unit that, that will be uh igniting all that stuff hmm very interesting that shit needs to be moved somewhere probably on the front here let's lose that we have to find a good spot before we permanently mount it well i guess that's the only way or let's say if we do it to the back oh yeah it's also kind of gonna work what if we put in the burner And another burner is not fitting in there, so in fact, the only one single option to mount it properly without interfering anything is gonna be the same. It's gonna be this way. There's no other option. In fact, yes okay now so let's check it out again yeah there we go That feels like a good spot. Either keep that and make a connection right in between here, which is kind of cool with me. Yeah, look at that. Seems to me pretty perfect spot right here. need new uh, compression rings like this it's ready to be hooked up on this end ready to be hooked up here look at that goes there spark fitting goes behind it and goes to the belt that's the hole for red wire I put the grommet like this, seal it and, and prevent from wearing. Just different way we need to install it, I guess, like this. Perfect. Six uh, 150. I installed that ring, which is uh, snaps in there. And the four wires, so not a big deal. We just heard that. Just now. I guess this song is pretty famous now. <laughs> Perfect. It's pretty secure. That's the uh, spark to hook it up the wires. It's kind of hard to see here. I'll try to make the best. But on the wire itself, it says MV, PV, PV, MV. That's the middle one, which is a white. Blue one is PV. PV, it's top one. 
and and the which is the bottom one the ground is right here We can plug it into the transformer and once we plug a transformer in we'll get the power getting to here. It's hooked up 120, hook it up here. There's nothing on the way, it's easy to access to everything. Safe, I don't think. Okay, I got the pipes today from Home Depot. Two up valve. Got black pipes. The other guy from Home Depot say that there's no really difference between galvanized or black. It's just cheaper, maybe, but I'm still gonna replace it anyways. I got tougher part without any uh, couplers here. It's gonna be 21 valve, 30. And then uh, just like this, hook in that all this combination gonna stay here. Sediment collector. Also I got those compression links connect that pilot right there. I already shot the main gas valve so if I open there's no gas. That could be removed right now. So I got pipe range. I got the smallest one, cheapest one from Husky, 10 inch. That should be good for me. I'm not gonna do any major piping here around the house. Even if I do, it should still be good enough for that. Yes, it turns easy. It's a proper tools. That's my new pipe. Okay. So that's the new pipe. That's new valve. The guy at Home Depot really was a nice guy. He helped me to cut it everything by dimensions I brought for him a while I bought like six six feet pipe in the first place I wanted to buy you know a treading tool so I can make the tread myself and get home and just do it here a smart move to measure and get back to Home Depot and just do it there because <clears throat> they have rigid machine it does much quicker much better there is a huge machine machinery uh, much more convenience you know than, than doing it home that joint. I believe that should be good. It's perfectly aligned. Now I take it off this and put that coupler connector here. Here at my last pipe here. It's really perfectly. The measurements were done right. There's no stress on the piping like it was before. It was like touching the bottom. Might create some kind of sort of noises, you know, vibration and stuff, squealing, squeaking, you know. You measure a few times and cut it once. And I'm actually doing climbing on the gas line first time in my life. I only hooked up a couple times appliances. Yes, I did that, but never did measure hookups like furnace that's my first project ever and I'm like not not construction guy I'm a DJ guys I'm DJ there's 
be some noises on top, but here nothing. Okay, looks good to me. Now I'm gonna check for leaks. And once verified there is no leaks, I can go further, hook it up the pilot. And the electric part, there's a really not much left to do. I also have to think about switch, what I'm gonna do about it. Uh, I wanted to make a switch on the side somewhere here. I don't want to have like breaker that will shut off everything. No, this fan works strictly from the sensor. So I want to keep it that way because in case it's overheated and you flip the breaker and you shut the pump off, it's, 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 it stays hot and you want to cool it down the chimney. Once you flip the breaker, you should sh shut off the valve, close the, you know, the flames, but the fan should keep working. That's how I want to do it. And that's why I want to make a separate switch just for the valve and the controller. Turn the main valve gas on. Looks good. Pilot needs to be mounted. That's the specific screw. I'm not sure if it's this thing is replaceable or not, but looks like it's one piece. Tighten it and it's pretty much ready to go. I want to double check it fits. Open this again. Yeah, it will goes through, it's gonna be compressed, okay. Bottom one is it's half inch. I'm using 13 millimeter. Okay, hook it up to 20. Oh, I mean 110. I got the wires that go for uh, humidifier that I'm not gonna use anyways. That black wire 110. Uh, the white one is already hooked up to here, so I'm not doing anything with the white, but just bringing it over here. Black one needs to be wired to that, so but I'm not gonna do it right now. First, I'm gonna do on this area, and then I put this one, the last one, so I don't mess too much with the hot wires. That's the white. and made some spare. Zip ties. Thing left to hook it up electric wise. It's gonna be phase. And the thermostat. Let me see if there's any illumination on the, on the board. No reaction. Let's try to hook it up thermostat. All right, I got Nest here, according to, to the manual of this module, the one wire goes to 24 volts, another one goes to THW. This wire should go to W1, and another one, I don't really know where it goes to. But anyway, we have to test it. So I got the wire here, our H, we're gonna put the black one, and W1, and we're gonna put the white one. In the unit, we're gonna do uh, THW, it's gonna be white one, and RH gonna go to 24 volts, which is a black wire. So the white one, as I said earlier, will go to the THW part. Black one goes to the 24 volts. I just want this thing temporary hooked up. It would not, if there's no power, because this thing didn't work for a long time. Probably, probably like April, I will say. So that's the nest. Looks like it's working. Let's try. Just double check as everything is hooked up. The gas line is on. Let's try to call for a heat. Call for heat. The beeping. Okay, 
Now we know ignition is working, but the valve itself it was on the off position. Spark works perfect. It was just tested. Let's do another call, and as you can see here, no LED, no LEDs. Oh, actually, it's blinking. Yes, that does blink now. Does a heat call. I don't feel any uh, smell of gas. The valve itself should, uh, sounds like clicking on and off. So not supposed to be not the issue. I don't feel any s smell. So let's try one more time. I cannot really tell you why it didn't start initially. Maybe that valve was something to do with it, but all of a sudden it started working. Just let's check it out. Heat call. Pilot. Fifteen. Uh, I'm not sure what about the flame and stuff. How to adjust it? Maybe it's too much gas. It's too hot. I don't know. I have to read this. But it uh, seems to be works really cool. Maybe it was air in the system. I don't know. Very possibly. Fires up just like never was before like that, even close to it. Maybe I have to adjust those things and see how you close them. I don't know how big flame supposed to be. I have to read that one. But as for now, it works good. I probably should wait until the motor kicks in. So one short test run for this motor, this guy to run. Before that, <laughs> to start that old junk to work, I had to tap a hit special. Tap on it like three, four times like crazy and we'll start to work. <laughs> Not anymore. There we go. The motor kicked in. And shut it off. That's it. If I keep kicking in again. Excellent! My house is ready for winter. <laughs> Almost. I also need to finish that breathing system, but since the cold is approaching us, that is very important too. So I had to do that first before <coughs> I finish my raiding project. Okay, um, now I can put zip ties around. 
So you won't touch anything, won't create any shorts, and will work flawlessly for years and years without touching it, opening it. Just replace the filter, it's keep going. So now I need an. Um, Few zip ties, put these wires around, put that main wire to the old one, and so all was set. It's about to shut off because it's does the sensor once it's cooled down to the certain temperature that it's set up here. It's about 130, I will say. So that fan uh, uh, range from 110 to 150 temperature. So you can adjust it uh, in case you don't need to run it to pull it down too much. But I guess you have to learn more what needs to be. And here is a. It works. I like how it works. It's reliable so far. Seems to be no leaks. Okay, guys, after <coughs> debating with myself. But that valve that I'm not really sure what it does for a system I decided to take it down right now so it won't create any future problems if you will you know I just don't know why it's for and I just will thus I will remove that connector and I have straight pipe from my previous setup perfectly fits right like there it's just perfectly for that length nothing to cut this pipe will give me much less concern than all this valve, old one. So I'm gonna install it right now. Drain the gas out. You just started the furniture furnace and it burn, and then I shut the valve, main valve. There's no gas. Pretty tight now. Okay, that's the year was first time why it didn't start initially. Right away, to seek it out. There we go. That gas, that uh, gas just came in. Fired right up. That's why it didn't work. So it was nothing wrong. I just had to keep it running. It looks like there is a flame really high right now probably should be adjusted but I believe there is adjustment in this thing there is a manual I believe there is a, <coughs> there is a part where you can adjust it there's a screw pressure regulator adjustment under cap screw there you go now we're gonna open it and reduce the uh, pressure screw right there flat head you take it off and then it should be adjustment not the plastic on the left but the bigger one Start it. Oh, look at the pressure. How nice is this? Look at that. <coughs> That's how it was was before. So that's definitely too high, in my opinion. That seems to be pretty good. We can shut it off again. And once uh, the pilot is cooled down, the 
is not ready anymore, I'll fire up again, again, and we'll see how long it's gonna take it, what the pilot will, will look like. Pilot is pretty high and confident. It looks like it's errorless, er, errorless start. I probably will drop pressure even more. how you can adjust precisely the flame this valve gives me actually much more than I was even expecting I now have to get into it how to adjust properly the flame and I'm gonna adjust it accordingly I don't know I know nothing about this yet I have to learn that but it seems to me very important for uh, efficiency and safety actually too so Put the screw now back. I'm very happy so far. I'm sure it's gonna improve this furnace a lot. That's probably the best of what will happen to this furnace ever. <laughs> In my research, <coughs> the limit switch needs to be the bottom one is a fan switch, the top one is limit switch. Limit switch is used for furnace. When it overheats, it shuts off the heating and cools down the uh, furnace. I can hook it up the switch to the uh, main power. <laughs> Instead of going straight to the board, I can go through that switch, which means when it overheats, it forcibly will shut it off this valve and the control board on the bottom. Then the fan will keep running until it cools down the chimney and that's what I'm gonna do. Instead of going straight, I just can go down here and uh, mount it through the switch. It's very easy and um, that's what we're gonna do right now. Power supply, we can take it off. Don't short it because it's, uh, it's hot wire, one of them. That's the hot wire, that's a transformer. All right, so uh, that's my limit switch hooked up here. All supply to the main controller board on the bottom goes through top switch. It's all set up now to 200 degrees. I'm not sure if that's what's supposed to be, but as for now, if it goes over 200, the furnace is gonna shut off and the fan will skip the cooling, the furnace. It's all assembled. It should come down. So, it's all covered now. The only cover left to put is this one. All the rest is done. It's all assembled. New wire comes, that up to the older one. Uh, and, and on the bottom there was a hole, so I decided not to drill more. Just use that that I had already. That's where it's hooked up. This wire and that wire. So it's a THW. It goes to 24 volts. The red one goes to RH. And that uh, TH, 24 volts if you can see there. That's TH slash W. It's white color and it goes to W1 on my desk and it works flawlessly, no problems here. The transformer creates a little bit of heat, but that's what it is. If I send a command on my app here,
pipe was replaced too. It's all sealed, there's no leaks. This one is new also. So I like the upgrade. And I'm ready for the winter too. So. That's it.